Hi, in this video, we'll be focusing on commodity trade and logistics uh, segment. Uh, commodity trade companies which predominantly deal with sourcing and distribution of uh, uh, commodities, which can include uh, uh, rice and pulses, uh, iron, steel, uh, cotton yarn, metals, uh, edible oils, palm, palm oil, etc. Considering the fact that most of the uh, engagements of commodity trade companies are cross country or cross continent, uh, that is sourcing is happening from one continent or one country and the customer or distribution is going to happen from for another country or continent. So this particular nature of the business, uh, as they all say, bring in a lot of complexities as well as uh, uh, precision requirements from, from, from the uh, procurement team to the distribution team which manages all these activities or the process life cycle of the engagement so uh, as they say generally uh, a small dollar value or a cent can create a million and then similarly a mismanagement of an information or a wrong prediction can possibly create huge losses so uh, focus softnet has been into this particular segment for quite some time now and uh, over the period we have evolved with the solutions uh, and uh, for now we are offering uh, an integrated platform which covers opportunity management which is the acquisition part uh, starting on the acquisition that is the inquiry and then the follow-up of the inquiries all that part is being handled from the crm side then similarly uh, on the on the workflow part which is the sourcing part we handle uh, we are able to cover uh, on the same platform the stage analysis apart from that a sourcing analysis and similarly a contract management contract management includes the vendor contract which is the supplier purchase orders and uh, the terms and conditions in quote terms c and f terms uh, all those terms and conditions plus the specific information of the sku or the product to be imported uh, all those details are being covered in the contract. So that is the supply chain which we enter into the ERP side, wherein we bring in a comprehensive purchase or procurement workflow, which can cover all the aspects of uh, purchase request or purchase order, and then subsequently the GRN, and then subsequently the uh, purchase voucher. And that brings in the cross module integration, which is of inventory or WMS, uh, which makes uh, or which gives the visibility of stocks uh, in real time against the warehouses again the multiple warehouses as well as uh, the information of what is being available and what is required to be available in a particular virtual manner that is the virtual stock stock on hand stock on order and stock on purchase order so all this entire life cycle is being covered under focus 9 and crm platform which is being offered by focus Softnet. so uh, we'll walk through with the product uh, during the course of time uh, and uh, we will give you a rather possibly I'll, I'll i'll be in a position to give you a data entry elements as well as a workflow process also so moving on the product possibly covers the first and foremost aspect of the product is a glance or a, a snap view of an information to all the management staff in the form of dashboards. So product covers or the platform has a comprehensive ability to present the information into a dashboard view. So this is an example of a finance dashboard where you can, you can see margin trends, top customers and top suppliers. And there is a summary info panel which has been created for total sales, purchases, expenses, GP, et cetera. So this is a very uh, specific information that can be uh, available for uh, an executive management at the finance level. The same way you can have it for procurement, the same way you can have it for stores, likewise based on the roles and the hierarchy or the uh, requirements of, of the particular decision-making requirements of a particular staff within the organization or within the on the platform, basically. So coming on to the workflow, uh, as generally most of the commodity trade companies follow a similar workflow uh, 
some of the companies have different terminologies but more or less they they remain the same so as you can see on the screen purchase orders or the purchase contract which can be uh, worked upon and then you create a sales order and then based on that you create either a delivery or you create a grn and subsequently against that you can also you are basically on the procurement side you are creating a grn and based on that you are creating a purchase voucher so with focus 9 we bring in uh, unlimited master procedures unlimited masters are nothing but dimensions for reporting wherein uh, an example of a dimension could be a tank or a warehouse an example of a dimension could be in code terms an example of a dimension could be uh, uh, contract reference, BL number, etc., etc. So these are the set of uh, masters or additional masters. You can see port of loading, possibly destination, in code terms, shipment type, specifications, customers. These could be possible masters which can be available, and we ideally use somewhere around uh, seventeen to eighteen masters for these type of businesses uh, on Focus platform. So these are the various masters uh, which you have on the platform. I would rather take you to the platform straight away. So here is the platform. So you can see on the screen. So I've logged in already as a data entry user. I'll try to demonstrate with a data entry and approver and a possibly through a CEO. So as you can see on the screen, on the first glance itself, or, the, or the, on the main dashboard itself, we are able to see an information of sales contracts, uh, the completed orders, uh, statistical information like three orders because it's a demo data, three orders or three completed orders. And then it can show you also possibly uh, purchase orders information by date. And then it is also showing you the information of inventory info panel when it is showing you 74.5% stock is available against which stock out is somewhere around 25.5%. So that is the brief uh, out of against the 100% obviously. So these are the dashlets which can be created on the platform and uh, they are user specific and they can be uh, customized possibly as per the user requirement. They have certain privileges against rules and responsibility against rules and hierarchy if you have the provision you can customize it otherwise an admin user can customize these dashlets for various users across the organization so to start with the flow let's begin with the first part of the transaction which is purchase orders so here it is you can go to the purchase order entry first and foremost entry is the purchase order entry Think it was idle, so it has. So I'm just putting a password. So dashboard has loaded. Now I'll move on with the flow purchase orders. You can see on the screen there are few purchase orders which has been created already in the system for the flow uh, there are it's it's a view a document view you can customize this also we'll go that later at a later stage but i'll just sh show the entry part first so here you can see all these are the purchase orders which are available in the application you can click on new or you can just double click on one which is available let's say pt mahir group musantara is one of the supplier against which the palm oil purchase order has been raised. So here are the details. You can see on the top a purchase order reference, which is PO number, then the date, then the vendor details, the currency, possibly the loading port, possibly the place of delivery, then the narration of the product, the payment term for the product or uh, for the uh, for the purchase order, the item, the metric term details. You can create multiple items. You can have all those item details, and these are the currency specific information. Now this particular purchase order, once it is entered, can go for an approval. Uh, there is an approval login, wherein once he logs in, he can approve it also. Or you can just directly do a print out. So here is a print design or print preview. 
while the print preview is available, it can be sent as an email to the supplier also directly. So let me just show you the preview. Here is an example of a preview. Uh, I think we just tried to match up the uh, purchase order conditions. Although this uh, Bahasa in, uh, is not available, you can customize that subsequently at a later stage also. So this is an example of a particular print format and that has been possibly aligned uh, to the closest possibility uh, for the demonstration in the preview. So you can see on the top, port of loading, port place of delivery, trade terms, final destination, packing, possibly last date of shipment, partial shipment. Uh, these are the terms and conditions and then quantity plus or minus 5%, etc. So these are the terms and then you have the individual signatures. Uh, all these definitions are being defined in the print. So prints are again customizable. You can create multiple formats. Uh, in fact, uh, with some other customers, uh, we have always, or rather we have already designed a print layout specific to the type of item. Like if it is cotton, yarn, there are specifications which are different. If it is metals, there are specifications which are different. So we can do that uh, comprehensive customization. Uh, these are the fields which are available. And as uh, we have talked about last time or the previous uh, in the previous session, these fields can be customized and can be incorporated also uh, based on the specific requirements. So like, for example, there are specific fields of terms and conditions you can define here. So here you can define that as well. So this is a purchase order screen, the first data entry screen. Once you enter the data, you can print the purchase order and send it to the supplier. So in this example, we have a palm sludge oil, which is 200 metric ton and at a particular rate. So that has been phased. So you have all these information which is available in the product, in the purchase order. The next thing on the flow, as you have seen on the flow over here, after the purchase order, you possibly raise a GRM or the material receipt note. So what you will do is you will, after the purchase order is approved and printed, if the material is on the way or is coming, then you can just go to the GRN or the MRN, click on pending purchase orders. So it will show you all the pending purchase orders which are not being converted to the MRN or you can just click on, because I have already uh, completed them, or rather I'll just create one new so that it is clear as well. So let me make one new purchase order also by copying the document instead of typing it completely. Copy to clipboard, I say new, paste from clipboard so that you don't need to type the entire contents again. That's the reason I'm trying to see the easy way. So let's say I'm taking it on 13th of February. I'll keep all the contents being same except the quantity maybe. So let me just save it. Now this will obviously go to the approver because it will not be visible unless and until it is approved. So let me go or log in as an approver. So you can define a hierarchy basically and uh, you can have various people approving the documents. Okay. So when I log in, I can just go to the inventory menu. From there, I can have the alert also. Right now it is not available. You can have it on the desktop or on the dashboard. You can approve it from there as well. So let's say I'm going to the purchase order. So the last purchase order, which was there, was for the same 130, which is data entry. You can see created by data entry. So let's say authorize. So it's approved with a status as approved as status created by data entry and authorized by approver. So you can create the hierarchy 
as per the business requirement or as per the uh, hierarchy within the organization so let's say i'll just close this and i'll continue with the flow with approver only then i'll go to the next document which is mrn so here i will be able to see a pending purchase order because i have just entered the order now so you can see this order of 13th of february i can just double click on this it will load all the details in the mrn so you basically you do not need to enter or re-enter the data once again now while the data is loaded you may have specific information of freight forwarder in code terms logistic charges these are the additional information may or may not be required for a specific requirement of a customer or a specific customer requirement and then where am i receiving it let's say these are the tank storage tank or storage locations we have created pks mill timangan pingiran timangan pitisan uh, has been created so you can possibly select and then do it also so i'm just selecting some port of loading also let's say i'm receiving this on 29th of february i will not make any modifications except bl number i will select one bl number you can create a new bl number also so once this is done it moves on to the next document which is purchase voucher which is into finance purchase voucher now i would be able to see because it, it was done by the approver only so it will see this has been shown here so i can just double click here it will convert again so i will select purchase import so reference number 2061 equals something as a reference number it can these are all again customer specific so let's say I'm receiving it on 29th only. So here I say this is for the financial posting. So here these are the purchases which are completed or which are already entered in the product. This is in simplicity a purchase process or the purchase module or the procurement cycle. On the other side, while the purchase order is being raised, you would also have a contract, which is, in other words, in our application terminology, we call it sales orders. So here in the sales order, you can see, you can directly convert a purchase order also, or you can make a new sales order. So for instance, there was already a sales order in the name of Red Fit Stock, which was already created. So here is the order. I'll just show that same order. So here is the details you can see on the screen, uh, the document number, which is the sales order or the contract number, the transaction date or uh, the, the order date, the customer for whom you are buying the goods for or on whose behalf you are buying the goods for, whom we have to supply the goods to. Then you have the details of port of floating, uh, original, origin of port, place of delivery, trade contact. In this example, I have already added Thomas Wick. Uh, then similarly you can see the item details and this is again linked to which particular purchase order you can see this and these are the rate agreements or various values which are available in the product now what i uh, other than this you can see the shipping document details like uh, a port of pasir godang malaysia based on inco terms 2010 etc partial shipment is allowed whatever the terms you want to keep for you can type them over here Similarly, special conditions, composite sample performed for PTC, CIC, Jakarta, so Port of Dumai, etc. All these terms and conditions or any additional field information can also be customized. You can see specification information is already there. Uh, sales contract number is already there. Payment in advance, if it is there, it's available there. Then payment terms, if there is any kind of payment terms, you can update the payment terms also. If you have a copy of an attachment or a file, you can attach, you can browse and attach the files also here. So you have a library of documents attachments as well. So once this is being done, you can possibly oh, save it or rather you could have printed it also. Let me just print this. 
So a sales contract printout can be possibly shown or can appear in this manner. The same thing, uh, a sales contract can be sent as an email by the system itself, possible. So here is an example wherein you can see the sales contract reference numbers, uh, 190911 something. Then the buyer, the seller, you can get the address details. So you can, once it is populated in the address master, it will be available. Then you have the uh, definitions or the static text information which is available. The product which is being in discussion, the quantity, the price, uh, the place of delivery, the specifications. Basically, uh, you've taken it as per this, as per this. You can put this grid also, by the way, uh, first metric. And I just use this part to this extent. I've used quantity, uh, margin, and the price as, as it is, 370 metric ton. You can put these conditions also. Then similarly, you can put this, as you can see on the screen, Place of delivery, Pasir Kudan, Port of Pasir Kudan, sampling. So these are all sampling terms which were there. Additional documents for delivery which was there as part of uh, the quotation or the uh, sales order. Then additional documents for delivery, compliance requirements. So uh, basically, uh, the format is fully aligned. Possibly, we can have. Furthermore, adjustments or furthermore modifications depending on the uh, need or depending on the requirement, or you can adopt to something which Focus is already having in place, uh, which has been followed by or which is being followed by most of our existing clientele. So you can create multiple formats. You can have the so-called uh, sign images also as part of the product. You can see Mr. Thomas sign. And then these are the format which is already available as sales contract with the logo and other things. If at all you want to keep the logo. So that is the sales contract. Again, the sales contract. Once this is being done, against the sales contract, you would possibly have the invoice or the delivery <coughs> schedule of the delivery. So in the delivery, I mean, we are using the word, uh, the term as invoice. You can reach the, change that to delivery also if the billing is not required to be done. So here is the delivery. You can see uh, in out voucher series, basically out stock out. Basically, you can see pending sales orders. These are all the various sales orders which are yet to be uh, invoiced or delivered. So let me just select one of them of fresh fit stock only. So here, all the details are loaded. So let me take this on 1st of March. Then it requires BL number as a mandatory field. So it is linked to a sales order. You can do a partial delivery also. See, you can see it is 3,600 metric ton. You can do it for, let's say, for the sake of discussion for now, you want to do it for 3,000 metric ton. You can do that as well. And next time it will show you 6,600 metric ton as balance. So right now the stock is getting negative because the stock is not available for that date. So let me just try a smaller quantity. So as this is being done, you can just, oh, sorry, you have a warehouse, which is from which location you are moving this. I will select PKS mill. And there are a few additional information like reference number. It is marking, it is giving you an information wherever there is a mandatory field. You can define your own mandatory fields anyways. So voucher is saved now. So this, this way in simplicity, other than the CRM workflow, which we talked about the other day, uh, in account, uh, in the ERP side, these are the things which are available from <coughs> the platform itself. Okay, uh, so there are various functions within the platform. I'm just focusing, as we have discussed last time, I'm focusing only on data entry elements, how seamlessly the data entry is being done. Your data entry, particularly, uh, as far as the user experience is concerned, your manual effort is one time, uh, from the supply chain side, from the procurement side, that is in the purchase order, and from the distribution side, which is uh, uh, the, the sales side, you enter the contract, which is a sales order in our software terminology. 
so once that is being done rest all process is auto population or of the information or auto load of the information and possibly with the approval uh, in place for the uh, verification so now on that note i think there was one specific thing which we were talking about the other day uh, on uh, the information related to stock by location like you can see the location by stock incoming outgoing etc which uh, i think i have created something already in the stock ledger so this is let me just take it by all you can see all these for palm sludge oil for palm sludge oil foam for example you can see against pks mill all these items are quantity received and quantity issued and quantity balance so basically this is the total balance of 6560 is available in the stock now at the same in the other day as i was saying we have the function of filter wherein we can just filter for a particular tank let's say pks mill only so it will show me the stock or in kg or whatever the metric ton or kg or anything it will show me to that particular extent only so only 800 is available so likewise if i want to filter for another one which is pt san it is giving me possibly 5630 this is how the stock so you can have the warehouse based or tank based stock analysis truck based stock analysis and logistics in the platform or from the platform also there was one more thing which we have uh, talked about the other day to provide a forecast of procurement and shipping correct so in this uh, it it basically defines from a particular date to another date i think this is uh, a very summarized information wherein you want to know on which day the stock is going to be available on which day the stock is not going to be available Uh, against the receipts or against the incoming or outgoing of inventory so to do that easily in the system we have created a new report uh, or the report which is available in this manner so if you see this this covers this has information of all my incoming which is quantity in quantity out and the balance quantity so total quantity is 6560 metric tons whereas out of that you have the incoming and outgoing respectively now in order to achieve this particular uh, report in a similar format uh, like as you can see on the left hand side you can see the dates which is month across the month because it is starting from january to march so you have the dates like jan first etc etc horizontally defined and vertically the values are coming in so uh, the other day i think i have said this we have a powerful tool called bi which is built in bi as part of our product wherein you can analyze any report data and have presentation being done similar to an excel so let me just demonstrate that particular part from this same report let me analyze this into presentation form which is more or less like this so uh, this is the area wherein we can do or we can have the presentation of data into a particular format so in order to get that particular thing what i will do is i'll select date column grouping then i'll select possibly the name which is the item name and i'll select the warehouse i'll select the document which is a transaction reference and then i'll measure it against quantity which is stock quantity now let's look back at the details so if you see this uh, there was na i think uh, uh, this is because uh, i have taken it on a not applicable warehouse so if you look at this here you go you can see on this particular date these are the stock side available on this particular date these are the stocks this particular date date by date stocks information 
and total 6560 is the total quantity. So this is the power which focus brings in, uh, in terms of reporting, in terms of visibility of information, and that matches to the entire uh, accuracy uh, of the of the cross modules, which is right from inventory to procurement to uh, finance as well. So I'll just hold here to absorb. You can observe the uh, uh, you can see the columns as expected. So it is giving us an information of location, which is tank or mill, uh, PKS mill, for example, on in that particular uh, tank or storage, how much is the quantity on this particular day? How much is required on, on this particular date? Because there is no quantity on this particular date on that. Then this one, this one, this one, like this. So individually, if you've noted, I'll just cross verify the report uh, for the clarification. 800 should be available in PKS mill. 5630 should be available in PTSAN. So let us go back to the stock ledger, which is my inventory stock report. So we have just shown this, but I'm going back again to validate the report. So here it is PKS mill, I'll click on PKS mill filter. So it should show me 800 as balance. So that matches over there. Then similarly, I'll filter on PTSAN. Anyways, I mean, PTSAN is one of the example, PKS mill is one of the example. You can take it for the truck, you can take it for the locations, or you can take it for the tank, 5630. So 5630 and 800 matches exactly. Oh, sorry, it has, I think I have closed that window. So 6560, uh, again, I'll just do it again, not an issue. So once again, we do it, we bring, this is an example parameter to match up to the report expectation, which was told to us last time. Now this can be again, based on the combination you want to have it. It can be again in your hands, basically, in the user's hands or in the administ administrative user's hands, wherein they can drag and drop these columns and slice and dice with the data depending on the requirement or the need of the management so mr thomas wants a report in this particular manner you have information in this manner now this is summarized by the location just summary so at any point of time if i want to just see the summary i can see this like this so if i want to get into the details of it i'll bring in the document number so this the appearance changes now you can see the appearance very clearly you have so many ins you have so many outs in february you have one out in march you have one more out which is stock out and this is of 2000 and this is of 100 so you have 800 here and 5630 here plus 130 which i have just added, added as not applicable warehouse so that can be changed anyways So uh, uh, let me just do a quick recap what we have tried to achieve in our POC for now is we have designed exactly the way you are looking at a PO, a purchase order of a supplier. We have designed exactly the way you, look, you do the sales contract or more or less the similar way except the few metrics or a few XLS grids which I have not put only to give you a flexibility or understanding of scalability factor of the system. And then another thing we have done is the inventory information, which is stock in, stock out. You don't need to maintain that in Excel. Altogether, you are maintaining that in Excel as, as we can see. You don't need to maintain that in Excel. You can directly get it from the system along with the truck details also. I think we have talked about it last time. Uh, you can even info, in, incorporate the truck details for the movement as well. And subsequently we have done the, the forecasting part, which is which was one of the things which Mr. Thomas was asking for, uh, is already in play. It's already, uh, I think I have demonstrated that part. This can be, again, you, can, you could have seen it 
uh, possibly if we have not then i'll just show back again i'll show that again it is from and to you can take as on date or date range from and to let's say from january to march for example then it takes all the dates based on the available data in excel you would be possibly putting one two three four five and everything uh, but in software it will populate the data only when there is a transaction in that so basically validated data not the blank columns so that's how it works in a simple manner so to this part i think we have covered initially we have talked about uh, the the basic functionalities of the crm the acquisition part the stages etc and uh, this is our, our comprehensive erp part which is the actual uh, back office uh, part uh, being talked about at the moment so that's it from my end for now uh, i'll share this video and we'll build on the discussions to the next level possibly by friday thank you